Architecture is about intent, the shape of the system, the way its components are organized, the dependencies between those components. It's about the intent of the system, not about what it's built around. Use cases are significant architectural elements. They are the things that tell us the intention of the system. So they are important architectural elements in the shape of our software. One of the biggest, biggest mistakes that programmers make is that they assert detail far too soon. Programmers are detail managers. Did you know that you were a detail manager? That's your job. Your job is to manage the most hideous details that anyone has ever managed ever before. How many of you within the last year have written an if statement that checks to see if a text file has lines that end in backslash R or backslash M? Who's written that if statement in the last couple of years? Now that's just the most hideous possible detail. But you and I have to deal with stuff like that. We deal with all the worst possible details. You and I are detail managers, but we make a mistake. We get ahead of ourselves. We assert the details too soon. We do say uh, that there are no rules um, in that you cannot go and buy a methodology, get a methodology and treat that as being the way you write code, right? So, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to go down to my local shop and I'm going to buy a manual on, you know, how my company will develop code. And then I'm going to follow that manual and everything will be okay. Um, it's never going to work. And it's not going to work because all of these quote best practices are contextual. You know, it's only best in your team, right, working on your project at this time for your company, etc., etc. And what works in those circumstances probably won't work on the next project. You're going to have to adapt them. You're going to have to change them. And we see um, more and more uh, people who are being famous. And I think one of the big failures of the agility movement is that we didn't stop that happening in time. And so what's happening is a lot of people going around saying that, you know, well, here, here's Agile in a box. And you go and you spend $2 million with us and we'll give you the box and then you'll be Agile. And obviously that doesn't work. Refactoring is all about taking these very small um, semantics preserving changes. I always like to say that they're so small that they're not worth doing. But by stringing together a whole bunch of these very small changes, you can actually make a very big change. And that essential process of refactoring is very much the same. And indeed, many of the actual refactoring moves haven't really changed much in, in 20 years or so. Well, I mean, you need to refactor the code when, um, well, for various reasons, but I mean, I always find a clear indication of it is when you can't understand the code and you spend some time trying to puzzle out what some code is trying to do. Once you've puzzled it out and you've got some understanding, um, it's, a, it's a phrase that um, Ward Cunningham used that I really like. It says, once you've developed some understanding in your head, you've got to take it out of your head and put it back into the code. So that next time you come through or next time somebody else comes through, they're able to read the code and understand it. Um, another trigger for refactoring is when you want to make a change and the existing code just isn't structured in a way that makes it easy to make that change. In which case, it's often faster and easier to refactor it to make it so it's structured easily and then make that change. Um, it's the, the phrase that Kendex says, I mean, first make, the, make it easy to change and then make the easy change. Um, and um, those are the kind of things that trigger refactoring for me, either when the code isn't clear enough to understand and I gain some understanding and I want to embed that into the code, or when I want to make a change and it's easier to, to put the new functionality in. There, there are a number of interesting things when it comes to bugs and fixes. The, the, the first thing is we have to be um, uh, tolerant of our humanity. In other words, we're not perfect. There will be bugs. Um, we are not going to be in a position, except for tiny fragments of code, we're not going to be in a position to be able to eliminate bugs. So we should recognize that up front. And so our goal is not bug elimination, it is reduction. Elimination sounds like 100% you know, of bugs have gone, there are no bugs left. Um, uh, so we should be tolerant of the fact that we make mistakes. We make mistakes from, from many different reasons. We have misunderstandings. Um, the very capability of understanding somebody is also laced with the fact that we might misunderstand them. You know, human beings, we are filled with possibilities. We imagine when somebody gives us a requirement or when somebody describes something, our skill is at being able to expand on that. So they don't have to tell us everything because otherwise they would be programming us. So that's our skill. We expand on that. But we also expand imperfectly. So some of our bugs are misunderstandings about requirements, misunderstanding about how an architecture works, but also we have moments of distraction uh, and flow and we make mistakes. That less than should have been a greater than, that kind of thing. The and should have been an or, all of these little things. So um, so first of all, we should give ourselves a little bit of space, but at the same time, we should also say, yeah, but bugs are a problem. They are a problem. We need, to, we need to find them and fix them, um, but we also need to work out how to do less of them. We can't necessarily eliminate them, but do less of them. Because a bug, a bug uh, is unpredictable. We don't know that it's there, and we don't know how long it's going to take to fix it. It could be five minutes, it could be five hours, it could be five days. It could be, as I know a couple of people have experienced, five months. And nobody put that in a plan. Nobody had that idea. So they have this high variability that is toxic to any kind of delivery process and is dangerous. It, it's, a, it's a huge, in one sense, it's a huge waste of time. Um, and of course, you know, we can't get rid of all of them, but what we can do is reduce the probability that they happen. So that's one thing. What is it that we can do that makes the probability of a bug less, um, uh, reduces that? The other thing, when we fix it, we need to recognize that there is a lesson to be learned there. That sometimes when people fix things, they are looking at 
just fixing the bug as it appears, rather than taking a step back and realizing this bug is uh, this bug can teach me something. It can teach me something about how we work. It can teach me about something technical that myself or my colleagues did not know. Um, it can teach me about the time pressures um, or the priorities of my organization. Um, it can teach me that this bug might not be alone. We might have other examples of exactly this hidden in the code base. And just because they have not yet been discovered does not mean that they are not there. So one of the things you want to do is learn from that and say, well, hang on, where else could this have occurred? Instead of surprising ourselves in the future, what can we do? So there's a kind of a learning idea and an improvement idea. We should, on the one hand, be kind to ourselves and recognize that we can have bugs. At the same time, we should also um, uh, guide ourselves and say, you know what? I'd rather not have this bug again. I don't want to spend my time hunting this down. That's not, that's not what I'm here for. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe that is your job role. Uh, but for many people, when they look at a bug, it's a thing that gets in the way of their work. But because of that, they sometimes say, right, just going to get it done and be done with it, rather than looking at the broader implications. What is there we can learn? And does this happen elsewhere? How do I stop it happening again?